Welcome back, Commander. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zum Battlecast Folge 5 mit Mobi. Und am Mars 90. Heute geht es weiter mit unserer CNC Legends Reihe. Zu Gast haben wir heute das Mastermind der, der Musik hinter Command Conquer, Frank the Pecky. Das Interview wird wieder in Englisch stattfinden und es folgt eine separate Folge auf Deutsch. Aber jetzt beginnen wir mit dem Interview und switchen auf Englisch. Amas? Hello Frank, nice to meet you and thanks you for the chance to talk with such a legend. I think we start right now with a question that I wanted to ask you for many, many, many years. How often are you asked about the lyrics in Hell March and uh, what they said there? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the, uh, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's been debated for quite some time be between many in the community and, and even amongst in, in myself, uh, just trying to figure it out. But uh, unless somebody can find that guy and ask him personally, there's it's kind of a mystery still. <laughs> there's no definitive yeah. answer there. Yeah, I think so. But as a German, it's really, really easy to hear out what, what they're um, saying in the song. But yeah, I, I, I know this mysterious about this. Yeah, I, I read it, I think, the last 20 years. <laughs> it, will, it will continue to be urban legend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's better if it stays as a mystery. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of fun that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you started working on Tabir and Dawn uh, 25 years ago, How much game material did you uh, get to find out what music style might fit best? Um, well, I mean, it was it was an interesting experiment uh, working on it back then. Um, honestly, it was uh, kind of determined by just that process alone. I, I got to try out a lot of different styles of music. I was encouraged to try a lot of different styles of music just to mm -hmm. kind of see what would fit. And um, You know, we had a round table with, uh, you know, the president, audio director and myself, and we took, we just had a listening session of, of all these different elements of things, you know, what about this soundtrack? What about these bands? What about this, just this part of this song? What about this instrumentation? And it was just kind of all over the place. So I recorded onto a cassette, all of those ideas and brought it back into my studio and just kind of ran it through my own, uh, you know, composing filter, if you will. And, uh, just came up with a lot of different things. And um, the my original thinking was that, okay, well, maybe not all of these are going to work, but at least we gave it a shot, right? And so then once we put it into the game, um, it just so happened that everybody kind of liked the variety. And uh, so that was allowed to kind of stick. And uh, that's that's really how it came about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how was the collaboration on the musical side of the videos, uh, musical side of the videos and the work with Joe Kuken in the first uh, Command and Conquers? Yeah, um, so with the, uh, the, the FMV stuff, it, it was a lot of fun to see that incorporated into the game and, and uh, working with Joe was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we'd see each other fairly often and um, he would uh you know bring me in as an extra sometimes in the video so i'm actually one of the nod cyber soldiers that that dies <laughs> in that sequence and uh and i'm and i'm also uh the russian guard in uh, red alert who gets who gets killed by a masked you know guy from behind yeah. <laughs> him so so those were fun to do yeah so you're kind of the sean bean of command conquer yeah <laughs> yeah i just i die in all of them <laughs> <laughs> But um, I got to do some other things too, though. I, I got to uh, be the voice of the commando unit. So a lot of people, you know, re recognize that, you know, the guy running around going, I got a present for you. You know, that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I, I really don't know it because, yeah, I play play all of those uh, games uh, in, in German and it's a, it's a different voice there. But yeah, I, I don't yeah. know it. And I don't hear it out also, also uh, from the song. Yeah, it's good to know. <laughs> um, so then next. Yeah. So the, the, the master question now, um, not Orange VI. Not, of course. <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh, nice. Um, Tiberian Sun came with a very dark anti mood and you have clearly been able to adapt it uh, with the music. How did you manage that? Where, what were your thoughts about it? Uh, about uh, Tiberian Sun? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, so, well, that, that really was more of a direction that I got from, you know, from the president and, 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 and uh, wanting to make that more uh, of a dark, moody, atmospheric, 
post-apocalyptic feel. Um, Cause I originally started working on that with the intention of uh, continuing what I had done previously. But um, you know, he, he wanted to change direction on that a bit. So that was really the catalyst for me, you know, making the soundtrack that way and, and bringing in uh, help as well on that. I co-composed that with uh, my friend, Jared Mendelson and, uh, and actually, uh, we did work on a handful of tracks together in the same room that co that sort of kicked off what the sound of that game was going to be. So that was, that was a really fun time. I enjoyed that experience. Okay. Um, how much influence uh, did the games have on each other? Example, given uh, Renegade and Tiberian Sun, um, did they influence each other? Um, a little they were a little bit different from each other i mean i guess there is some crossover in the fact that um i've carried over some of the main themes from the first game into the other games so you know like no mercy is for example the main theme for kane and nod and i use that melody in cinematic sequences for tiberian sun to you know to uh go along with that and then you know and i also bring that into you know uh, the other games it's it's a little bit in red alert too actually because of uh you know of kane's you know underlying involvement in that too and <laughs> and uh and then also um the gdi theme uh kind of evolved out of the theme airstrike which is in tiberian dawn there's a the uh, guitar melody in that is mm -hmm. the basis of what uh gdi's theme became uh mm -hmm. in later games mm -hmm. is it difficult to remember all these stories from 25 years ago right now <laughs> not really uh just because i've been so focused on it doing these remasters now you know so doing the remaster collection i had to go back in time and mm -hmm. and remember what it was like during development and i remembered a lot of you know different things that we did and or or even just had to rediscover them so uh so that's it's been a surreal experience to do that <laughs> yeah um were there any songs that you had to cancel because of the lack of space also you would have liked to ship them um well for for the remaster we threw in everything i mean i even dug up stuff that was left out of the original games that are bonus tracks mm -hmm. um so yeah uh when we were working on them back in the day um, I would often, uh, well, I, I discovered that I had other tracks that I, I'd forgotten about that um, I had composed for those games at the time, but uh, were deemed either not quite a fit for what they were for or, you know, yeah, or space being a factor or who knows. I mean, it, it's, it's tough to remember why they were left out, but obviously there were reasons. And um, so I figured, you know what, this is a great opportunity to to you know unearth those and and give the fans a, a treat of you know some some deleted tracks if you will that were that were left out for whatever reason but you know it, because it's a collection now and we have the jukebox feature and we can unlock bonus stuff it made sense to use it in that capacity yeah i can say there's no real reason why they were left out because they're all great really really good <laughs> well, yes. thank you very much i appreciate that yeah i love the remastered versions of the the old songs also yes. it's really good um, which of the Command Conquer games is musically your favorite one and why? Um, in terms of to play or as the in soundtrack? In terms of music, soundtrack, what, what is your masterpiece? Oh man, well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's so many favorites. I mean, actually, uh, a good answer to that question is um, all of the songs that I perform with the Tiberian Sons and that we did our show around and then of course included into the remaster, that's yeah. basically all my favorite music in, in the CNC series. Um, a lot of them are fan favorites too, but some of them are specifically mine as well. So uh, that, that kind of sums up, uh, I think, you know, where, where, where I feel <laughs> more akin to. Um, how did the Tiberian Sons and Frank Klepecki happen? Um, so, uh, it starts, uh, quite a while ago, actually, um, in about 2008, uh, this kid emails me and says, Hey, I'm, uh, doing this remix of, of Hell March and, uh, I figured who better to ask than the original composer, what he thinks about it and how I can improve it. Maybe you can give me some advice. 
So, um, so I listened to it and I thought it was really great what he did. And I just said, you know, all you have to do is just kind of mix it a little bit better. And I give him some tips on that. And uh, he submitted it to his contest he was trying to do and, and ended up winning. And so, um, and then after that, he just kind of kept in touch with me over the years and let me know what he was up to and asked what I was doing. And, and I just kind of got to witness him climb the ladder of his own uh, career as a professional musician and, and uh, you know, producer. And, and his name was Tony Dickinson. And uh, he, he is, of course, now the uh, bassist for the Trans-Siberian Orchestra and uh, Soto. And, um, but uh, before that, he uh, did other remixes of other video game soundtracks that were of, of the same kind of uh, sound. And uh, he put a band together. And because he was a Command and Conquer fan and started his journey with Hellmarch, he called his band the Tiberian Sons. Uh, they performed at uh, MAGFest, which is, um, you know, video game, you know, enthusiast, video game soundtrack uh, community uh, festival where a lot of bands uh, are formed that do covers of video game music, but they do it in their own way or do their own arrangements or do their own special spin on the performance. So I got to watch that and uh, thought his band was stellar musicians and and uh, was really supportive of that. And so then uh, since he was the one who told me about MAGFest and I heard her from a couple of other uh, peers and colleagues of mine that it was a, a wonderful experience, I figured, ah, you know what, this might be the right time and the right audience to present a Command and Conquer show for the first time. And so... Um, I contacted the organizers there. They uh, offered me the headline slots. <laughs> so then I called Tony and I said, hey, um, I got the uh, the headline slot at MAGFest. So you guys want to uh, play with me on this? And he's like, oh, my God. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So so that's how we joined forces to do that. And from that performance, um, our producer, Jim Vesella on the remaster collection was uh, impressed with that and, and asked, you know, if I wanted to consider you know, doing proper recordings of what we'd done live, but include that as a bonus for the remaster. So that's how that, that all came together. Nice. Nice. Um, uh, you have planned to do some concerts in Russia this year, but these events were canceled due to the uh, Corona crisis. Um, there are new dates for these concerts right now. Will there be any um, broadcasts or recordings of these events? Um, I don't know yet. Um, it's too early to, to have those details, but, um, you know, hopefully something will, you know, will be able to be worked out from that, whether there's a recording involved or something, but, um, yeah, we just, we just want to get there at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so much, so much entertainment has unfortunately been canceled, you know, live entertainment has been canceled throughout most of the year. So that's why we had to, you know, the promoters encouraged us to, you know, push it to next year. And hopefully things will get, you know, more sorted out by then and we can, you know, go and, and put on the show properly. So, yeah, we're very much looking forward to doing that. Um, we, we're very interested in going to Europe, too. You know, we'd love to, to play for the audiences there. Um, we're working with an agency there uh, called Codex Agency that's, you know, trying to make some dates happen as well. So, again, everything is just dependent on, on this, you know, virus situation. So, like I said, hopefully yeah. by next year we'll have some answers. Okay. Yeah, then, uh, then we skip the next question because the next question was if you have any uh, information about Europe, but you uh, you answered. Um, when we will get new material from you and will you and the Tiberian Sons also appear on Spotify? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't have any answer for that just yet. It's more of uh, an EA thing. Um, as to you know what happens with uh, with the soundtrack at that point, but um, but yeah, just to keep posted on on their their information. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, do you do the next one? No. Um, who got no? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, we had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, almost uh, three weeks after the launch of CNC Remastered, what do you think about the feedback of the community? Oh, it's, it's been awesome. Um, you know, I, I've just seen nothing but uh, praise and, and stellar reviews and, and, and the community specifically is, you know, going out of their way to, you know, either post on, on my social pages or, or email, email me and saying, you know, how much uh, they're loving it. And, um, you know, it's really awesome. I mean, 
you know, I went, we went, we really went out of our way to include everything and, and make it a complete a collection as possible with regard to the soundtrack specifically. I, like I said, I just went to every length I could to get it all, you know, as good a quality as possible, uh, find all of the bonus stuff. And uh, I even had to recreate some of the tracks from scratch that I could not find the original mixes for. So, uh, so that was another challenge, but, you know, I, again, I, I did it, you know, it was with all the same matching instruments and, and just mixed it as closely as possible to what the original intent was. So, yeah, um, it feels good to, uh, for everybody to be, to be really loving it. Um, you know, that's ultimately, you know, what, what we hope, you know, is we put this out there and, and hope that it's well received. And a lot of people are saying this is kind of the bar to hit for a remastered game. So, you know, Petroglyph, you know, did a stellar, stellar job in, in really putting the same love and, and, and attention to detail into it. Yeah, as already said, the, the remastered soundtrack is really one of the highlights of these, these yes. games. It's really good. Um, <laughs> do you play the game yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had to, you know, just to test everything out, make sure it works. So, you know, I've had to had to go play through it again. But uh, it was it's fun. It's fun to, to see all of the uh, the old stuff. And uh, yeah, I recognize, you know, all the Westwood employees and all of the videos, you know, from back in the day. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, so, yeah, it was fun. really fun to see that. <laughs> um, shortly, we were allowed to test Earthbreakers. Uh, was it difficult to musically uh, separate it from renegade because it it uh, the most people um thinks or say it is a renegade 2 or it's it looks like a renegade 2 um was it from the music side uh, hard to separate this uh no because i went in a completely different direction actually um you know earthbreakers is you know in the spirit of you know the kind of gameplay that that renegade had but it's you know it's going to be its own thing and and um you know, we did, I didn't want to just kind of repeat myself or, or make it uh, sound like a clone of that. So, uh, so yeah, we, we had some discussions uh, with the team and, uh, you know, tried some different things. And it was actually a, a good excuse to be able to do something I haven't tried in a game before. And uh, so um, I went more with a, a direction of um, like blues and surf and classic rock and, and just trying to make it kind of raw and uh and and fun you know and and not so uh typical of of what a lot of fps games have been doing uh in in recent years so yeah it's it was it was cool to just kind of go a completely different you know and that's and that's really what i'm all about i, I love being more rebellious with the soundtracks that i come up with and and try to add some unique personality to the game because ultimately that's the goal and uh everybody seems to be enjoying that so far so uh yeah looking forward to working on that more Yes, yeah, this is also a, a kind of the next question. And in Earthbreaker, Earthbreakers, I think we hear a very different Frank Lepecki, but still you feel at home immediately and realize that is a, another musically masterpiece. Do you feel like a different kind of artist there as well? So, because we really he heard um, that there's... I don't hear before any kind of this music from you. Yeah, well... Uh... You know, I've I've definitely dabbled in it in the past, but I haven't had an excuse to really feature it in a in a game soundtrack. You know, um, so uh, so because of that, this this felt like the a good opportunity to to do that. So um, maybe a lot of people don't realize that I'm into a lot of genres of music, and that uh, you know, even though I'm most known for Command and Conquer series style. Uh, the hybrid of the electronic and the rock and the, you know, yeah. and all of that orchestral. Um, it's, uh, that's just one facet of what I do. I love, I love funk music actually uh, just as much as, as rock or anything else. So, you know, um, I have a, a band called uh, Face the Funk and um, I put out a couple of albums with that that are available everywhere. And uh, it's a 10 piece band with five horns. And it's very much like James Brown, cool in the gang, Sly and the Family Stone, you know, and uh, I'm very inspired and influenced by that music. So um, that's another thing that I do that's different. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, if, if and there's a solo album, I, I have several solo albums out under my name, too. Uh, one of them is called uh, Conquering 20 Years. And this was sort of like after 20 years of my career. 
I went through like a retrospect of, of styles of music that I've done over the years, going back to like chip music, you know, from like the Nintendo and the Genesis and all of that, all the way up to yeah. what I do now, which is like full on like symphony metal and, you know, all of that stuff. But everything in between the synthesizer stuff, ragtime. A lot of people don't know I did the soundtrack to Monopoly for Westwood back in 1995. Also, the same year Command and Conquer came out, completely different soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. ragtime music with piano and it was like, uh, like, you know, jazzy swing stuff. And, and uh, you know, so that was a completely different side uh, of what I do as well. Um, so this, so Earthbreakers presents yet another opportunity to show another side of, of something that uh, I've been, you know, curious to see how it would uh, shake out in a, in a soundtrack. Yeah, and, and there... it works well. Because we start Earthbreakers in the stream um, on the on the Steam Festival, and I think a few guys of us uh, just stand there for five ten minutes to hear this music, because it is amazing, really. It's really amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, what games uh, or what projects are you working on currently? Uh, well, uh, currently working on Earthbreakers, uh, obviously. Um, that's the freshest one and you know and what we just presented on the steam fest was you know our prototype which is you know still early in development um so that's really the focus right now um and uh got a couple of solo projects in the works too um i've got a new solo album that's going to come out this year uh nice. i've got an ep that i'm planning to release this year as well um and uh so hopefully there'll be news about that next month Uh, what else? Uh, that's that's kind of it for now. Um, I'm do oh I'm doing a, another um, project with uh, Tina Guo. Actually, we're doing a um, we have a, a publishing uh, deal that we're writing some music together for. Uh, so it's sort of like uh, her her cello, uh, amazing style uh, mixed with you know the metal that she likes to play too. And and so we've we collaborated before on some tracks for her cello metal album, and then. Based on that, uh, this publishing company uh, wanted to uh, have us do more stuff for them in that way. So, so we're working on that too. So oh, great variety of genres. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. just keeping it rolling, you know. Uh, <laughs> since we're in quarantine, all I can do is be in my music studio. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, what instruments yeah. do you play? What's that? What What instruments do you play? Um, I play drums, guitar, bass, keyboards, and sing. Um, and then uh, the instruments that I don't play, I write charts for and hire musicians to play that stuff. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds very nice. Um, who do you think after Jim Fasella and you could be the next interview partner at our special series here for the CNC Legends? What do you think uh, would be the next good um, for CNC Legends? Ah, uh, well, you know, you got to go with Joe Kukin, I would think. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried it, but um, he's, uh, it's very hard to contact him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's a tough one to catch. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, Jim, Jim said in our uh, first episode um, that you had a lot of stories about, uh, while working on CNC in the past decades. Um, can you give us at least one highlight? What is, what is the best story no one knows about? <laughs> uh from from the past working on it yeah um well gosh i've, I've shared quite a question. bit so uh, <laughs> i i don't know i don't know what people what no one knows necessarily but um let me think about that um uh let's see um well That's a tough one. Sorry. <laughs> it is. It is. A, it is a tough one. Like I said, this I've I've shared so much over the years. There's not really anything yeah. that I haven't that I've held back and or at least intentionally. But um, you know, there's just been funny funny things that I remembered. You know, about working on the game. Um, I remember that you know we used to play it late at the office. You know, when we were developing it, uh, because we were we were just a, getting addicted to it. We thought it was so much fun. You know, once mm -hmm. it started coming together. Um, You know, we but I mean, this is before we had Discord or Ventrilo or all of that <laughs> stuff. We didn't have chat, you know, uh, capabilities. So we were using the Office intercom system, <laughs> and we were we were taunting each other over the uh, the Office phones. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I've told that story before, but it's still one that I crack up when I think about. And um, let's see, another thing was, um, you know, uh, 
when I was working on some of the music, um, there were there were some things that I tried that were a little over the top. Um, so there's a bonus track in the remastered collection called Die. And uh, it was actually buried in the mix files of the original game too, but it wasn't really featured. Um, and it's more of a real heavy, you know, metal tune. Uh, the, um, I did a, a demo version of that before I did the final version and the demo version just had a bunch of just screaming in it. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> Die! You know, it was just like crazy thrash. <laughs> And, uh, and so everybody was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's too much. Get, get rid of that. And I'm like, okay. So then I took out the, the vocals and redid it. And that's the version that's in the game. But, um, but that was just kind of a funny, funny thing to, uh, to think about. Um, for the remastered collection, though, um, I actually had to re redo all of the sound effects. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a, a challenge. Uh, my, um, my audio uh, partner in, in, in the team back then, uh, Dwight Okahara, he was the lead sound designer and, and did all of those sounds originally. So, uh, so I was paying homage to, uh, to his work by, uh, you know, literally having to find all of those sources again from scratch. And, uh, you know, and I remembered where a lot of that came from, thankfully. Uh, so, you know, I, had, I still had access to, a, I kept a lot of old stuff from back then because I used to mirror my uh, home studio with my work studio. I bought everything the same that I had at home. And that way I could, the idea was that I would come up with, you know, ideas for music or, or audio uh, mm -hmm. on my own time that I thought would be cool if, if I got inspiration. And then I'd bring that and finish it at the office or vice versa. So anyhow, um, thankfully I'd kept a lot of that stuff over the years and it came in handy for working on the remastered collection because, you know, I was able to go and find a lot of those old sources from back in the day and, and recreate those sounds faithfully. So they sound exactly identical, but in high fidelity. So that was a, that was a, a challenge for sure. Cause it, I took, it took so much time to weed through all of those sounds to find the right ones that I could put together and mix together and make it sound right. Yeah. So, sounds crazy. I, I my last question for today, um, personally, what is your favorite kind of music? What are your favorite bands, artists, or what do you hear personally? Um, so, uh, well, like I, I mentioned, I love funk music. So, you know, uh, again, you know, Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, I actually I actually tour with the Family Stone on the drums uh, <laughs> for the past couple of years and, and off and on before that. So that was a dream come true for me. Um, Let's see, uh, Vince DiCola is one of my favorite artists. Um, he's a progressive rock keyboardist, uh, but, you know, very uh, well-versed in, in, in lots of, of styles himself, but that's his thing. And, uh, you know, he and I became friends over the years. So he was a major influence on me just, um, you know, because I appreciated that he was a pioneer of that, that genre of music and in making mm -hmm. synthesizers and soundtracks, you know, like, like Rocky four and transformers, 1986 animated film. So, um, and I actually got to play drums for him last year uh, for one of his shows. So that was another dream come true. Um, uh, Metallica is one of my favorite bands, metal bands, mm -hmm. uh, anthrax, uh, nine inch nails. Um, uh, you know, what else? Uh, yeah, just all over the place. Um, You know, I, I, I listen to probably metal and funk the most on uh, leisurely, but, um, you know, if anything if I'm in the mood for, uh, just the other day I was uh, listening to Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, blues artist uh, that I love. So uh, you know, it just, whatever I'm in the mood for, uh, Sting and the Police are one of my favorite artists. Uh, yeah, just uh, kind of all over. Oh, I nice. thought of, um, I thought of another story to share with you guys that's German specific. Okay. Uh, so when I was doing the remastered collection, um, I, of course, so we were also remastering the original German assets for the game, you know, for, mm -hmm. for those games that we had. And uh, in doing that, uh, I was um, I, I found that, you know, we had, of course, had censored a lot of things in the early days because there was a, a censorship thing where you couldn't show blood mm -hmm. and, you know, they had to be robots or androids or whatever. And and but also. Uh, I didn't realize that we had edited out some of the uh, full motion videos too uh, yeah. for the German versions. So there were, you know, anything that had like a, a blatant gunshot in the video was <laughs> changed into a, a electronic 
thing or or it was just cut out entirely and some of the some of the uh, uh movies came back and said hey these these movies aren't matching in the german version to the the u.s and i'm like really i'm like and because we were using the original videos that we upscaled and um mm-hmm. so then i looked at those and realized oh my gosh it's missing an entire section that's why <laughs> so so but now nowadays you know that the the censorship thing's not an issue and you guys can can have those versions now as they were originally intended so what i had to do was i had to uh edit the audio back in of the uh the english versions but uh but keep the german uh dialogue in there so i had to like cleverly figure out you know how to do that with <laughs> sound design and and with certain sections and and chop and match them up uh in red alert there was a whole section of uh of uh you know Einstein finding Hitler that was cut out as well yeah, in the intro. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole section of Stalin's speech that's completely gone from uh, the middle of the, the campaign. You know, when he talks yeah. about, you know, when you, when you kill one, it's a tragedy and all of yeah. that. That was completely cut out. <laughs> so I had to add that back in too. And thankfully, we had the German dialogue for that missing chunk of video. So there was lots of, of little discoveries that were specific to the German version that, that we ended up, you know, being able to remaster faithfully and, and put it back in. Nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, uh, we, we here in Germany, we, we missed a lot. Um, we hear from a, a lot of German players. Um, they don't know that uh, so many uh, was cut out. And there uh, was really amazing. This is uh, this sounds like a really new game <laughs> with all these yeah. um, new videos inside. So it was really really cool that now we have everything inside. Um, yeah, yeah. And w- one question for me: so for the next remastered, maybe it will comes. Uh, we become the early version of the song "Die," yeah, because I really want to hear it with the screams. <laughs> <laughs> well like i said that was I, i remember doing a demo of it and then and then not using it so the oh. version that's in the game is the one that was you know final okay. mixed but okay. uh but yeah that was just a you asked me to conjure up a story and that was one that came up that i remembered yeah okay yeah then um thank you very much for this opportunity to you have any last words for the community just uh just big that big thank you honestly, to the community, um, because the community has kept these games alive this whole time. Yeah. And it's because of that, that this was now possible, you know, and, and it's, it's through the community council that Jim formed that, you know, also helped us, you know, address a lot of things that the diehards really were, you know, into or had, uh, you know, any sort of feedback about. And that was really helpful to us along the way, too. So, so really, there's a the community is is much much more important uh than people i think realize in this particular yeah. franchise and and for that I, i all i can say is a huge thanks for for sticking with it this whole time uh and for all of the the messages that we've gotten all of the positivity and, and feedback we've gotten it's been really wonderful and uh yeah i uh i do hope that uh, maybe there maybe there's another opportunity i don't know we'll find out yeah thank you very much i think so Yeah, thank you very much for this. Um, now we end this and yeah, we think for the next uh, uh, guy we, we can interview, it, uh, we will say uh, in our news. So thank you yeah. again, Frank, and I wish you a good day. Thanks, you too. Thank Thanks you for having me. Hey!